Chronicles, if you would, please. First Chronicles. And we're going to try to incorporate all this. My brother, what would you do to your foot? Oh, I hope it worked. Well, sometimes it don't work. I hope it worked. Okay. I didn't hear any. You are a smart man. Yeah, ask me about the VA today when, after church tonight. I'll tell you it's a horror story about today. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse number 9 says, First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow, and Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Here's a man in the Bible that um, was evidently a godly man, a holy man. He was a good man. And um, he came to God and he says, Oh, God, I, I, I need for you to bless me. Bless me, and God, I want you to increase my borders, is what it says here, my coast. Enlarge my coast, that why? And that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me, and God granted him that which he requested. Now this church right here, Welch Creek Baptist Church, is part of something that God is doing. And I know God's doing a lot of stuff here with your camp meetings and with your missionaries and that type of thing. But you all are also a part of this. And this man right here prays regularly that God will enlarge my coast. Well, why do I want God, God to enlarge my coast? I'll tell you why. Because I'm going to meet Jesus Christ here pretty soon. I'm going to meet him. If you're saved, you're going to meet him. Uh, we just sang a song here. And I forgot to write the page number down. But it talked something about meeting Christ. Um, we're going to meet him in person. And the only thing that's going to matter when we meet him is what we did for him. It's not going to matter about how big of a building we built or how big of a business we built or how big our farm got and all that. That's all insignificant. What did I do for Christ is going to be the only thing that's going to matter when we meet him. And you, you will meet him if you're saved. You will see him eyeball to eyeball as your savior and not your judge. Your sins have already been judged if you're a Christian. Amen? And so you're going to meet him as your savior and um, so I've been praying about this and praying as, and asking God to enlarge my coast. Look at over here. You're in Chronicles. Go over to Second Chronicles, if you would. Just keep on turning over just another 20, 30 pages to Ezra. Ezra chapter 7. I love this book, Ezra. There's so much Ezra, Nehemiah has so much application to America today and the, the minor prophets, all oh, the stuff that's going on in America. Whoa. So much parallels with this Bible. Ezra chapter 7, it says down in verse number 6, This Ezra went up from Babylon, and he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses. That simply means that this man was a student of the law of Moses. And by the way, he didn't have Google. He didn't have these bound or anything of that nature. Didn't have electricity. Uh, but he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord of God of Israel had given. And the king, listen to this, and the king granted him all his request according to the hand of the Lord, his God upon him. Now, I hope and pray that you, you as a Christian, want God's hand upon your life. I've been praying about this for a long time. I've been involved in the Independent Baptist Church for 45 years now. And everything I put my hand to do, to try to do for the Lord, I've asked God, please put your hand upon this. Please help me. And this situation right here now, we started this on 9-11. You already know the story, so we don't need to go on the story. But on 9-11, we started taking Bibles and Bible literature over here to Fort Bragg. Well, that was 15 years ago. And, and as of now, four or five weeks ago up in Michigan... We did another 10,000 of these at uh, Chelsea, at Faith Baptist Church in Chelsea, another 10,000. And that brought us to 140,000 of these. They're $2.50 each, and they're all paid for. 
Now, the last 10,000 that we just did, they've already been distributed. Now, you say, how did you do 10,000 of these in the last four or five weeks? Very easy. This is what we're doing now. This is for Veterans Day. And I mentioned to you that five years ago, we went to the Golden Crowd. It was in Eglin Air Force Base, Fort Walton Beach, Florida. I talked to the manager of the restaurant. And down there in Florida, in that area, the Panhandle of Florida, I seen it one year. I seen a line of men. I'm talking about a line of men almost two football fields long, lined up. Now, I, I, ask, I ask you a question. How many of you all have ever been to a Golden Corral on Veterans Day? Anybody? Okay, in the back back there. Okay, on Veterans Day. How many, how many of you ever, well, there's only one family here. But I can tell you right now, the one there at Eglin five years ago, it was 1,150 veterans that they fed that day. 1,150 veterans they fed in a matter of about five hours, six hours. Yeah. That manager gave me permission to go out, and this is, let me just stop here for a second. How many of you all feel like you're going to help Brother Baker? Brother Baker already told me that he's going to go to the Golden Crown on Veterans Day. By the way, it's not Veterans Day. It's going to be Monday. Veterans Day is on a Friday, November the 11th. That's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, then Monday evening, uh, the Golden Crow will be feeding veterans on the Monday. It's November the 14th. How many of you have already got it set in your heart that you're going to go over there and help him? Okay, there's one, two, three, four. Okay, there's going to be four. And, and plus Brother Baker, and he said his wife is going to go, so that's six. May I say this to you? Um, this is going to be work. You're going to be standing on concrete. you got to get over there about four o'clock. And you'll be there until you'll be there until either you run out of material or they get through eating, which will be 9, 30, 10 o'clock that night. And so hopefully you can get some more recruits to come and help you. Because you you I can't stand on concrete. I mean I can, but concrete is a killer. It kills my back. It's terrible for me. And um, but I've been doing this kind of stuff for a long time, so I'll get through it. Amen. And um, but you're gonna need to get some more help probably because you're gonna need you're going to need at least um, four people out there all the time. All the time you're going to need four people out there. And this is what you're going to do. You, the, there will be a line of men going, men and women, veterans, going into that Golden Crow restaurant. They'll be going in. But you're going to set up a table on the outside on the sidewalk and pray that it's not raining. As long as it's not raining, no matter how cold it is, you'll, you'll be okay. And, and you'll set up your tables on the outside so that when they come out that door, they're going to walk by you. And as they walk by you, then you're going to be kind to them and gracious to them. You're going to have your plaques and you're going to have your packets. And you're going to, hand, you're going to be handing them to these folks as they come out. And so you're going to have these framed, this all being framed. So as the veteran is walking out of the thing... The reason you need three or four people out there is because this guy. So let, may I use you for an example? Yeah, come on up here. Okay, now, how do I do this? Because you don't know what I need. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> so he just got his belly full. Okay, and by the way, he's a Korean veteran. This guy was in Korea. Okay. He's got silver hair now, and he's he's like this, okay. And you're gonna he's gonna come out, and um, let's I'm the Korean guy. I'm the Korean guy. Okay. You're me. So do don't do that, man. Please, <laughs> not yet. I'm getting there soon enough. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so you're you're brother Patrick, okay. and I'm the guy that just came out of the Golden Crowd. I'm the Korean fella, and. Um, I'm going to want to talk to you. I'm going to want to talk to you. You're going to hand this to me. Yes, sir. And uh, so I'm going to come out. Uh, I'm going to walk away from you. Okay, but you're going to get my attention, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yeah? yeah. How was your meal this evening? Oh, beautiful. Wasn't that good? How was my meal? Yeah, yeah it was pretty good, sir. Oh, great. I appreciate you I'd asking. I'd like to show you some information here. What is it? Um, it's a packet that our church put together. Or several churches put together. Okay. Now, what he is doing is exactly what needs to be done. 
Okay? But this is the problem. This is the problem. Behind, behind me is three or four other guys, and he's talking, which he needs to do. But they're walking right by and going to their car. And they're not getting anything. They're not getting the gospel. That's why you're going to need a couple other people. I don't know who you are, but you're right on the money. Yes, sir. Thank you. Do, are you a preacher? No, sir. You a salesman? Uh, no, sir. Okay. He's, right, he's doing what's right. Ask a couple questions. Now, sometimes I get myself in a situation where people are walking by me, and I say, sir, no, look, we want you to have one of these. No, God bless you. And, sir, this guy's walking by me, and I'm trying to, I, I try to be polite to people. In other words, I need to be careful how I say this. Okay? I need for you to come up here. Okay? Now, his daddy's a preacher. His daddy's a preacher, and that doesn't make him a preacher, okay? but he's a preacher's son. Okay? He's a son of a preacher man, okay? and his daddy's a preacher. Okay? I want you to stand over here, Brother Baker. Now, let's do this again right here. I'm going to show you guys something that if we all be honest with one another, we know that this gets done down in the south. Okay? And how, do, how am I going to do this? I want you two to talk. Just talk. Keep talking. Yeah. Hey, Brother Baker, man, it's been good to see you. Now, you two are talking. Brother Baker, man, how's things going for you? God bless you. So good to see you. Do, do, do you know what I just did? I interrupted a conversation, and it's a master amongst Baptist preachers. Baptist preachers at these fellowship meetings. And not only do does, does this go on, but this goes on. Hey, brother, good to see you. How's things going? And God bless you. Never even look at you. That goes on all the time. It goes on all I've been at this for 45 years now. Now, at these golden crowds, go ahead and have a seat. At these, go, at these golden crowds, you're dealing with somebody. You're dealing with... In fact, the truth of the matter is you might not know it, but you might be dealing with a war veteran, a prisoner of war veteran. And whatever you do, go ahead and stand up. Don't, hey, buddy, God bless you. Thank you for our freedom. Whatever you do, don't do something like that. Sir, we just want to appreciate what you've done for us. And, sir, this is a booklet from our church. God bless you. We hope that you take some time for this. And, and you be personal and kind. That's why you're going to need some backup, my brother. Try to encourage some more people to come. And, and, and you'll be out there for two, two hours or so. You might need somebody to give you a break and be there. And so this is extremely important. It's a tremendous opportunity to get the gospel. You're on private property, a Golden Crow restaurant. And this year, you don't know this, but this year we have eight. Golden Corral restaurants. Last year we own, last year we had five, and we had two thousand veterans last year that got one of these and was offered one of these. Two thousand. Now that two thousand was not over here at Buford. The two thousand was in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Eglin Air Force Base, and Buford and Bluffton. There's two of them there at Bluffton and Buford. We had Golden Corrals that we worked at. So may I say this to you? This is a tremendous opportunity. And I, I just hope and pray that the others, if you're off on Monday night, if you're off on Monday evening of that, that Veterans Day weekend, I hope you take advantage of it. Uh, you'll have your pictures of your church, um, the, the framed 8 by 10 frames. You'll be able to give them from your church. It's a tremendous tool. So I hope that you take advantage of it. If you have... Um, if there's any questions whatsoever, please, after church, uh, I will listen to any question after church, okay? And if you have questions, we'll, we'll answer the questions after church. And again, I would, I would encourage folks to, to, to volunteer for this and get involved in it. And I promise you, the Lord Jesus will appreciate it. Things like what just happened to me today at the hospital was that lady walking down the hallway saying to me, um, yeah, I'm looking for some more of these things. We're, we're, you know, I'm looking in the waiting rooms for some more. Well, God had all that or orchestrated, you know what I mean? God knows what he's doing with his word. And he knows what he's doing with his word at these golden crowds. And I will also mention this to you. The owner, the owner of the golden crowd over here 
he takes the packets. I leave him cases of them. Because at one time we were working at we were working with the Marines at the uh, graduation services, and the Marine Corps put a stop to that. Um, about two months ago, maybe three months ago, they put a stop to it. And so I'm no longer going to the graduation services, but the owner of the Golden Corral over there, they feed these Marines that are graduating on Fridays, and a lot of their families, they go to the Golden Corral to eat, and they'll eat down there on Fridays. And the owner, he takes our packets, and he puts them up on the banister. There's a banister there between the exit and the entrance. There's a banister there, and he puts them up there. About three months ago, four months ago, I got a phone call from Yemisi. Everybody in this room knows where Yemisi is. And I, yes, ma'am? You must live there. Oh, Buford, okay, Yemisi. So I got a phone call from Yemisi, and a fellow says to me, sir, I've picked up one of these military packets, and sir, we're having a Marine Corps reunion. A Marine Corps reunion in Yemisi. I didn't tell, dare tell this guy I was an Air Force man. I wasn't about to do that. But he said, uh, would you be willing to come and speak at our reunion? Well, the reunion was at Harold's Country Club. Does anybody in this room ever seen Harold's Country Club? The preacher's son is laughing. How many has ever seen Harold's Country Club? One, two, three, four, okay, five. <laughs> My wife was with me. I can preach anywhere. I don't care. I, just don't tell me what to preach. And don't, don't tell me what to preach. I'll preach anywhere. But don't tell me what to preach and don't limit me. If my wife was with me when I pulled up to this place, she was in shock. <laughs> You're talking about run down, man. It was run down. But we went from the country club on Saturday to the officers club. This Air Force guy got to preach at the Marine Corps officers club. And, um, and I, I don't want, I need to be careful here. It was only five minutes. They had a three-hour program for these Marines, this reunion for these Marines, old-time Marines that rode the train from up north to Yemisee. And they got off the, the train, the boxcars, in Yemisee back in World War II in Korea. And somebody came up with the idea about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, to have a reunion for Yemisee Marines. And, so, and they asked me to come and speak, but they got so far out of control of goofing off and doing stupid stuff that the preaching wasn't their main thing anyway and wasn't their most important thing. It was to the guy in charge, but it wasn't to the others that were doing raffle tickets and all this other goofy, stupid stuff that people do at reunions. And so when they gave it to me to speak, the owner, the manager of the Marine Corps Officers Club came walking in and told the guy and reminded him that they're fixing to have a wedding in this room and that we had to evacuate the room because of this wedding. So they cut me off real quick. But that's okay. We had five minutes to speak about Cornelius and how Cornelius was a captain in the Italian army and the Italian band, and he was a good man but a lost man. And so we planted some seed there. And so we appreciate your prayers. After the service, please make sure you see me on this. Let's take our Bibles tonight and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I'll say to you tonight, there's an awful lot that can be said. There's an awful lot that can be preached about. Um, I would encourage you on this. The last time I was here, was there anybody in this room that took some of these? Okay, Brother Baker took some. Okay, Brother Dill. Oh, you folks in the back took some. Have you had any bad experiences? No. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what's going on in America, but we all know that America's changing. And we can all get bitter. We can get bitter about things if we want to get bitter. And what I mean by bitter is all these Indians coming in here and all these all the stuff that's going on. I'm telling you the truth right now, and I don't know why preachers say that I'm telling you the truth like I'm not telling you the truth about this. But are you listening to me? Do you know these mom and pop Sunoco stations? When I say a Sunoco station or a little gas station that's got a little one pump like Harold's Country Club, 
they, they got one pump out, gas pump out here in the little island, and you go into the store, and they got all the lotto tickets up there. Lotto ticket thing like that. And they got a, a, a man standing back there. And what do we call, what do we call that? They're not Europeans. They're not Spanish, but the guys from Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia. What's that, what's that nationality called? They're not Arabs. Okay, the Arabs. Okay, so here we got an Arab looking guy. Are you with me? I have not had one. I've not had one Arab. Not one. Tell me no. When I walk into their little gas stations, you want to be an Arab for a minute? <laughs> you did a real good job at the other. So I want you to just stand here. In fact, face the people. Stand there, and you're an Arab. Okay, he's an Arab. He's standing behind his counter. He's standing behind his counter. He's got all his lotto stuff up there and all this incense that they sell and all this crazy stuff place is dirty and run down and all that, but he's an Arab, and most of them are smiling, so smile, yeah, and I go in, and I say, uh, um, I say, uh, I say, sir, it's good to see you today, and I'm from over in uh, the Savannah, Georgia area, and sir, this is a a paper that I publish. So this paper is called The Good News. And by the way, I do this when he doesn't have customers. He's a money man. He's wanting to make money and don't mess with his money. I can tell you right now. That's right. You heard what he said. That's right. Don't mess with his money. So if he's got customers, leave him alone. But you wait until the customers leave. So it's, the place is kind of dead right now. Sir, I just want you to know I'm from over Savannah. And sir, I, I publish this paper here. It's called The Good News Paper. And sir, I noticed that I noticed that over here you got a rack down there that's all empty, and there's nothing down there. And sir, would you have would you mind if I was to take these and put them down there on that rack? What do you think about that, sir? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, hold on. Yeah. Want he he doesn't know what to say, but can I tell you something? You know what he just said? He said, "Okay." These people are so laid back. They're, they're really, I mean, we, I know we got a lot of terrorists in this nation, and who knows who's the next killer. I don't know. But I can tell you one thing. I haven't met any of them yet that have said, get out of my store, man, with that Jesus stuff. But I have had Americans that the white guys that look just like me, the normal born here, live here, born ancestry is right from here. I've had, I've had the average white guy, no, 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 I don't want none of that stuff in here. I have not had one Indian, not one. In fact, most of them will say this to me. Sir, you, they, they, they take your counter. Here, sir, let me. It happened to me yesterday over here in the Charleston area. Here, sir, let me move some of this stuff in. He, sir, you just take that stuff and put them right there. I had, I had, thank you, my brother. I had, this is, I'm telling you. These people are interesting characters. I had one tell me, say this to me, and I forget what city I was in, but I had this guy say to me, sir, I'll tell you what you do. He's standing up there at, on his little platform, and he's looking down at me, and I'm looking up at him. He says, uh, put him over there. He says, let me see that stuff. He says, oh, he says, I know what this is. He says, you take that stuff and put it right up here. He says, maybe some of these Maybe some of these Americans will start reading that stuff and stop stealing from me. He said those words to me. Maybe some of these Americans will start reading that stuff and start believing it, and they'll stop stealing from me. What a testimony of the way Americans, you know, and that's, that kind of stuff is going on all across their nation. So I would encourage you with this thing. Um, subway, subways. Over in my area of Georgia, all the subways are owned by Indians. Now, I know there's some white folks in America like myself that own chains of subways. But the ones over my place are all owned by Indians. Every one of them allows me to put these in their subway. And the last one over there told me, he said, sir, go ahead and put them in there. But when the inspectors come, I have to take them away. In other words, in subways get inspected by the subway corporation. He said, but I'll put them back out once the inspection's done. That's an Indian. 
I would say God's using them to get his word out. So subways, gas stations, food lions, all across the nation. There's God has a place for his word. So I hope that you take advantage of this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And um, let's take a look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that waters, but God that giveth the increase. Isn't that something we see in these words here? Planting and watering. Planting and watering. Today at that hospital, today that I planted some, that lady goes down the hallway and she's looking in some of these other waiting areas, these surgery waiting area and a, there's three or four areas on that same floor. And here she is looking for some of the more of these packets. So I planted. She's going to take and plant what I just planted. She's going to take some of them, and she's going to plant them in her church uh, this weekend. And guess who's, guess who's going to give the increase? God's going to give the increase, but the seed's got to get planted. It's got to get planted. And so he says, so neither he that plants is, is anything, neither he that waters but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that waters are one. Now this is interesting, and maybe you wouldn't get involved in this, but I just mentioned to you that I preached this past Friday night at Harold's Country Club. I set up Bibles, and by the way, all the ladies, the, the women that were in there serving, and we obviously, and I obviously did not, we did not eat at a bar. I did not eat at a bar. I did not eat where there was liquor. They have a they have a banquet. <laughs> I dare call it a hall, because the the chairs the chairs at the tables didn't even match. <laughs> my wife my wife said she walks in and she says, "Honey, these chairs don't even match." <laughs> it was a it was an interesting place, trust me. And uh, but you know what? Each of them. Each person I spoke to that was employed there, when I showed them this and explained it to them, sir, may I have one of those? Sir, you can take some of those and leave those here. You can leave some of those here. God, he says here, God giveth now he that planteth and he that waters are one. We're working together. And by the way, that's what we're doing with the Golden Corral situation. We're all planting and watering and we're working together and we're going to work together on this thing. And, and uh, Brother Baker already asked me about me being over there, but there's 18, we got 18 of them and I can't be at this one. That's why somebody here will need to be in charge. Evidently your daddy, has your daddy already talked to you? A little bit, okay. Well, your daddy's going to be in charge, and um, which is simple. It's really simple. And so... And every man shall, look, look at this. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward. Oh boy, look at this word. When you use this word in the Christian schools, I speak in a lot of schools, according to his own labor. His own labor. After you got saved and you were born again, the Bible says that we're supposed to be servants of the Lord. We're his servants. And we're to be laboring, laboring. The Lord Jesus made that very clear. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he'll send forth what? He will send forth laborers into the harvest. It is his harvest. And this is astounding, but let's, let's first look at this. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building 
according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon, how, we, how we're laboring. What are we spending our time on? What are we spending our time doing as Christians? What are we spending our time? Where, how are we, are we spending our wheels or are we doing something that's productive and, and productive for his kingdom? Or is it that we're just enjoying life and going through life and having a big time in life? And, you know, and, 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 but we're not doing something that's eternal. We're not involved in things that are eternal. Are you all with me? It's very easy. It's very easy to get wrapped up in our own little thing, our own little hobby, our only little way. And I know a guy, I know a guy up in Michigan. Every time I'm up there, he gives me fish. He gives me fish, he gives me food, all kinds of fresh fruit. He's retired. He spends days, I mean days, he loves fish. He spends days up on that lake, Lake Michigan. I call him John. You know what? I can't imagine if he had spent the kind of time that he spends with his farming and his fishing, and he's a amateur golfer. Spends hours and hours on golf courses. Tremendous talent, tremendous golfer. Tremendous fisherman. Got a big boat that he does all this fishing in. You know what? This, this, I don't know. Is it eternal? Um, I don't know. But I do know that this, what you're fixing to do over the golden crowd this year, that's eternal. That has eternal rewards to it. Because look at this. Verse number 10. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid which is laid. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Obviously, we've got six ingredients in here, and we've got three that are there. It's 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 obviously divided. We got gold, silver, and precious stones that you build upon, and we got wood, hay, and stubble that you build upon. And he says in verse 13, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And if any man's work abide, which he has built upon, he shall receive a reward. And if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. And ladies and gentlemen, when we look at this type of passage of scripture here in Corinthians I don't know about you but I have to ask myself am I spending my am I spending my life am I doing something that's gold and silver and precious stones to God or am I spending my life in something that is just wood hay and stubble and that when I stand at this great judgment seat when I stand before the Lord and I have to answer take your Bible and look at this over here we're in first Corinthians but look over second uh, Corinthians chapter 5 in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I've got this marked in my Bible and it turns right to it, and so I don't want to get ahead of you. But 2 Corinthians chapter 5, this is an independent fundamental Baptist church, so I already know that you're aware of this passage of Scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says these words, verse number 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. You mean Christians can be involved? The Bible makes it very clear that Christians can be involved in the good and the bad. There's bad things that we we waste our time on. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. Look at this over here in verse 17 of the same chapter. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us. Take that word, us, all of us, the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, 
not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. You know, God is trusting us to be reconcilers. A reconciler is someone that stands between two people that are in a fight, people that are having problems. We, we bring them, we're bringing them to Christ is what we're trying to do. And it's four minutes after eight. Let me show this thing to you because this is six minutes. We'll close with this. And, and all this is is what we're trying to do on the streets with the military. I've been doing it for 15 years now. What we're going to be doing at the Golden Crow is we're, we're ministers of, of reconciliation. We're ministers that are bringing the good news to these folks, and we're trying to reconcile them to a holy God. There's only one way that a man can be reconciled. It's through Christ. It's the only way, and we've got the answer. And so let's just see if this thing will work. We'll show this, and now uh, we'll go home, and hopefully it will work. We had it earlier going. And... Um, all this is is six minutes of our work. And um, Dylan, why isn't it coming on? There we go. Got to push the button. This is a, a DVD. It's probably been years ago that I might have showed it here. I'm not sure. We're going to show it again tonight. I think we are. To cross the ocean wide and blue They carried their cross Not carrying the loss So other souls could hear the truth, but the light's grown dim in America, and sin will be our nation.
We are Patrick and Judy Hayes of Berean Armed Forces Ministries. We've answered God's call to take the gospel to the 1.3 million men and women who serve in our armed forces. We do this by personally confronting them and getting first-class Bible literature into their hands. The main outreach of our ministry takes place just outside the military bases of the United States. As they stop their car, we approach them and briefly greet them and thank them for their dedicated service to our great country. Then we hand them a packet of information that contains a clear presentation of the gospel along with information that will attract the interest of the servicemen. We hope and pray that the Lord uses this attractive patriotic materials to open their eyes to the truth about Jesus Christ. In addition to our seed planting, we follow up our converts with a Bible correspondence course. Lessons and quizzes are mailed to the troops and they return them to us to be graded. We also work with local churches to encourage them to reach out to the military personnel in their area and start working with the National Guard units that they have in their city. On a typical evening, we set up a support our troops table at the Walmarts near the military installations. In similar fashion, we hand out the patriotic gospel packets to those who pass by. We also recruit the help of adults and young people from all over America today to aid in this cause. We organize collating parties at churches to assemble the packets that we hand out at the bases. Since 9-11, we've been able to share 850,000 gospel tracts as of October of 2009. Each of these was hand-packed by volunteers in churches like your own. We also enlist the help of children and senior citizens to write and color pictures that are incorporated into the packages that we share with the troops on the streets. These are a tremendous source of encouragement to the young men and women who are fighting to protect our country. Here is just one response we have received. Dear Patrick Hayes, my men would like to thank you for the care packages that you sent. Most care packages are given to the conventional armed forces and rarely do soldiers in the Special Operations Command see these packages. This week, we were at a location with our other soldiers and were able to share in the packages. I will tell you that every time we see a school child draw a picture or just get a note from Americans who really support us is a morale booster. Thank you again for taking the time to send a piece of home. Sincerely, Major Tony Thacker. Would you please help us in this vital ministry the Lord has given to us? The first need is financial. It costs about $2 for each and every packet we hand out to the soldiers. Secondly, we would like personal notes and letters of encouragement to send with care packages to the troops overseas. The soldiers especially love to get pictures colored by children as it reminds them of home and family, and this helps open the door for the gospel literature. Thirdly, we need help assembling the gospel packets. Perhaps you can organize a collating party in your church. Lastly, and most importantly, we need your prayers. Please pray that God will touch the hearts of the police that are in the cities where we work, that they would allow us freedom and liberty to work on the streets and share the gospel with our troops. Please also, if you would, keep in prayer our health and our safety while we do work on the streets and while we travel from base to base. May God bless you.